Today I'm going to teach you how to draw a Here I am sketching out the tail and after that I will be sketching out the rock that the marmot is sitting on. The whole scene actually uh, shows that the marmot is sitting on a rock during sunset the, and the rock is on the ocean. Here I am mapping out uh, the face of the marmot where the eyes, nose and the mouth would be and also the arm, the placement of the arm. I find it easier to map out uh, the shoulders first and then the shape of the arms uh, like cylinders uh, so that I can connect the dots later and draw the arm properly. This way I can also play with positioning and figure out how I want the arms to be placed. Now I'm drawing the rock that the marmot is sitting on and I have moved on to the hair shape as well. As you can see I am drawing everything very lightly and in very sketchy manner and I'm not bothering to erase it at this point. You can see I have zoomed in to draw the face. Here I will be rubbing and uh, drawing it again and again to get the proportions right. Um, follow along to learn how to draw a face from the bottom looking slightly up. I will also show you how to correct your mistakes using some tools on Procreate. So keep watching. I'm correcting the shape of the face as I feel right and then I'm drawing the eyes and the eyebrows. Here I'll show you how to correct the face proportions. First I'm going to the selection tool which is that S option on top. Then I'm selecting, I'm selecting free form or free hand and then I'm just drawing over the portion I want to select. Once I have done that, I've closed the loop, it selects that part of my drawing and then I can just uh, click on the arrow button on top and I can move it around. Um, I am just eyeballing the proportion whatever looks right to me and I'm, I'm moving things around to get it right exactly how I want it. Now I'm rubbing and cleaning up my sketch a little bit to get my sketch in the right way. Because when you move things around with the tool it does mess up your sketch a little bit. Now I am cleaning up my sketch even more. As you can see, I am not erasing anything at this point. I am just going over with a little bit more pressure with the same pencil and drawing a little bit more details.
I'm going for the typical marmot curly hair, curly long hair, um, and you can see that from my sketch. Now I'm drawing the rock. I'm making it more irregular in shape and adding a bit of ridges to give it a more natural look. Now I'm drawing clothing for the marmot. I decided to go with a shell bracelet and a shell top. Also a ornament at the waist. Everything is made out of shale and pearls which is going to look pretty. Then I decided to add some hair accessories as well here. And some armbands and bracelets. I'm selecting the whole sketch now and made it a bit a little bit smaller so that I can draw the bottom portion of it which is the ocean and the rest of the tail. Now I just reduce the opacity of the sketch layer created a layer on top of it and now I'm going to ink it so I'm selecting inking um, and from inking I'm selecting studio pen as you can see I have also selected a dark almost black color here I'm going to ink it and choose the best lines possible from my sketch so that everything looks clean and proper I still do keep my sketches and inks a little more rough and sketchy uh, it's not that clean but you can totally create another layer on top and do a more cleaner ink line I love drawing long eyelashes and that's what you will see me do here and after that I proceeded to ink the rest of the piece. You will see me double tapping with my two fingers many times. That's basically a shortcut to undo um, and redo is three finger tap. I decided to keep this video a little more real time I'll, I have sped it up only a little bit uh, because I wanted to show you how much mistakes I made where I erase and where I redo things uh, it may get a little bit boring but would also give you a good idea that how much uh, do over and how much effort it requires to draw something like this
you can see I am adding details in the hair as I go and as I ink. Um, if this is difficult for you, you could do this step while sketching and while inking you can choose the lines that you like. Then I decided to rename this layer um, as the line art layer and also turned off the visibility of the sketch layer. You can see this gives us a clean inked sketch which now we can proceed to color. As you can see I have skipped showing the detail coloring. I have used the fill tool to color uh, do the base coloring of most of the marmot. I'm showing you here how I colored the tail and I've done the rest of the marmot in pretty much the same way. I always put the line art layer on top of all my color layers so that uh, no matter how I color it the line art is never covered it is always on top so you can always see the line art i'm cleaning up my colors a little bit before proceeding to shade it i'm creating a a layer just on top of the sketch layer which will be the background layer and I will be coloring the sky I am taking the acrylic brush under painting and I am going ahead with a blue color then a yellow color and I'm creating the gradient for the sunset sky 
so you can see I have picked an orange I'm I'm just moving down towards more warmer colors towards red and creating a gradient Now I'm taking the smudge brush and again I'm taking the same brush that is the acrylic brush under painting and I'm smudging it out. This is a textured brush so it gives a really nice cloudy feel when I smudge it out. Now I'm going on the top layer where I have colored the um, ocean and the rock so I'm creating a clouds on this layer which sits on top of the sky layer. I've taken the wet acrylic brush to create the clouds and I've taken a very light blue color. Now I am shading the ocean so I'm taking some blues and also some colors from the sky to create some reflection in the water. I'm still using the same brush and sometimes switching between the acrylic brush and the wet acrylic brush. I'm taking the water brush and I'm taking one of the water brushes and painting a little bit of water. Now I'm moving on to a yellowish darker brown color then I'm going back to painting and taking the jagged brush. It has a more dry rough texture so it is great for painting rocks. You will see me uh, picking darker colors and whenever I pick darker colors to shed more I always also change the hue to a more warmer color or a cooler color uh, so basically I don't only uh, you know pick the uh, darker version of the base color I also move the circle a little down so it becomes a more red or a more blue color in the shadows and for highlights i go the opposite way as you can see here since the sun is hitting on top and probably the edges i am taking a lighter color and drawing some highlights Now I am going to paint on top of all the layers. So I am taking the calligraphy brush and I am painting on the jewelry, all the pearl and the stones.
now I'm going back to the skin layer and I'm going to uh, I'm color picking the skin color the base color that I have painted with and for that I am just long pressing on the color and it will help me uh, pick the color now I'm going to the painting section and uh, I'm choosing the acrylic brush again So I'm alpha locking this layer so that I don't color outside this particular layer so that I don't have to worry about my um, darker tones going out of this layer and I have taken a darker tone from the uh, base color that I had color picked and also a more reddish color which will give a really nice blush to the marmite. I'm going over through all the areas where uh, there will be shadows so um, the elbows just below where her hair is uh, on her body sides of her face I'm putting a little bit of blush on her cheeks as well I'm taking a more darker color and changing the brush and going over through the shadows a little bit more I'm picking again a more reddish orangish color going taking the round brush um, which is a little opaque just simple round brush and I'm going over to some of the areas like the elbows the cheeks and giving it a more rosy hue now I'm taking a airbrush and putting a little more color you will see me building up colors here um, as I like it to give more depth to the skin tone and I took my time here because skin is my favorite part to paint and now I'm blending it with the airbrush uh, Choosing the airbrush for blending gives it a very very smooth look and that's what we want for the skin. Now I am painting the whites of the eye. I never pick a pure white for the eye. I always go for a light grey or a light blue. Uh, sometimes I add uh, a bit of pink as well. I'm coloring the irises in the same color as her hair and also her eyebrows. You'll see me adding some shades right below her eyes. Now I'm picking a lighter color, a yellowish color and I'm taking a textured brush. I'm taking the HB pencil and drawing some flicks and highlights in her iris. And also adding some darker parts to her iris as well. Now I'm taking an orange color and I want to give a natural rosy lip to the marmot.
I'm adding some color and smudging it out till I get the consistency I like. And you can see I am using an airbrush, uh, airbrush to blend because I want to keep the smooth look. I am also coloring in the teeth of the mermaid with the bluish white. Now I'm going to color the tail. I'm doing the same thing. I am alpha locking the layer, tapping on the layer and out of the option just select alpha lock. That will make sure whatever we paint on top of it does not go out of the already colored portion. So uh, you don't have to erase anything. I'm taking one of the textured brushes from the artistic textured section uh, and I am painting it in. You can choose any of the textures that you like and you feel will go right. I have just decided to take tessellated as the brush. You will see me later choosing other brushes as well like the Dove Lake, Melaleuca, uh, the names are really difficult to pronounce but you get the idea just take a bit of texture and you would take marmot colors like purple pink and keep on coloring on the tail and putting those textures on it Here I am creating one more layer on top of the tail layer and setting it as clipping marks. I am also changing the mode into multiply and then I am taking a dark blue color and coloring over it, shading over it. That will give us uh, some shadows and sending the, uh, the layer to multiply will make the shadows pop up. Since this was too much texture, I decided to blend it out a little bit and again I am taking tessellated and blending it out. The brush size was too big so I made it a bit smaller so that I do keep some of the texture and blend out the rest of it. Now I am taking a dark color which is darker than her hair base color and I'm going with the flat brush I'm going to paint on the hair same way I'm going to alpha lock the hair and then start painting the shadows Now I am taking a lighter color and going over to the sides to add some highlight to the hair as well. I am taking the wet acrylic brush 
because it is a textured brush and then I'm smudging out the highlights as well so that it doesn't look too artificial. As you can see here this will create a little bit of depth in the jewelry you can add some highlights too um, but I have not done that now I'm cleaning up my sketch and ink a little bit here and I'm almost done with the painting and I'm putting the line art layer on multiply so that it shows up as darker. It just looks better that way. Now I'm creating another layer and I'm changing the layer mode to add. And I am selecting a golden color and now I'm going to paint the light. I am going to first take at the, an airbrush like a soft airbrush and I'm going to paint the glow and the sunlight all behind the mermaid this is the best way to give a magical glow to our to your painting on procreate I'm just going very lightly so that it is not too much I'm also trying to give it a magical feeling and like the light is shining on the mermaid. I'm also giving a little bit of glow on the side where the light will hit her. So on the edges. Now I'm going to take a harder brush like an ink inking brush and I'm going to go over to some of the details that will give it a nice glow like the highlights the specks in her eyes on her lips to make it more juicy on her nose on the shells the jewelry to make it glow then on the edge of her hair and her tail I'm also going over on the sides to give some lighting. It just looks nicer. I decided to smudge out parts of the face a little bit but we are done so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it useful um, if you like my uh, art tutorials and if you like to learn with me please do share like and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching bye bye